Hi guys, okay, here's the video I promised you. I'm back on my PC, so I have my files, which is awesome. We're gonna start over here at create new, okay? Let's start something new. Okay, so some of these are things I've done before. So we talked a little bit about the different kinds of options, right? So there's like saved things, there's nothing in there. There's photo, right? Print. That's what we're gonna use this time. There's web and mobile, okay? Those are templates for other commonly used sizes, okay? And then film and video, if you're doing anything for TV or for projection, okay? Um, so those are all of their standard template sizes. And now if we go back to print, right, we can choose blank sheets of paper in whatever size we want, all right? If I go to view all presets, there's like all the different sizes of paper, okay? We're gonna choose tabloid, that's 11 by 17 paper. We're gonna change it so that it's going horizontal over here. Um, and then we talked about pixels, they're the little dots on the screen or pixels per inch, which is the little dots the printer would print. We're gonna go down to 150 pixels per inch in order to make our overall drawing a little bit of a smaller file to work with to begin with. Okay, so, and then we're gonna name this Lily Self Portrait Collage. And you'll put your name instead of my name because it'll be a portrait of you, not a portrait of me. Um, yeah. And then we create it. There it is. Okay, great. Um, I do want to make sure I put it into this folder. Okay. I'm going to just save as on my computer. Lily self-portrait collage. And I'm going to go put it into digital rendering self-portrait project. So we'll put it right in here. Save. Great. Okay. So now I have my self-portrait. We talked a little bit about layers, right? Um, so this is your, your layers list over here, okay? You know, make channels and paths small because we don't really need it. We're gonna double click on the background. That makes it so we can, you can draw on it or delete it, okay? And then we're gonna bring in our images that we pulled out of our folders. Um, the quickest way to do that is to just go to your source images folder grab the pictures and drag and drop them to Photoshop, okay? It's gonna bring them in one at a time. When you bring it in, you have the choice of how big you want it to come in, and then you click the check mark, okay? And it's gonna bring it in at full scale, so at its maximum pixel space. Um, and then you bring them all in, your little pictures. Um, because you brought a stack of things in, it's gonna have you insert each one, one at a time and they're gonna come up over here with the names that you gave them. So there's all my pictures over here. So we talked a little bit over here about how these layers are stacking, okay? So if you pull something up on top of something else, like my light sheep, right? I can bring him all the way up to the top and there he is, okay? Um, I can also do things with this image. So we talked about, um, destructive and non-destructive editing, right? So we talked about how destructive editing would be to take an eraser and erase the white from behind the tiny sheep, right? Um, whereas non-destructive editing, you would select all of the white and then create a mask using this rectangle with a hole in it that would cut out that white and leave it just a tiny sheep, okay? So I'm gonna talk through a couple of ways to do that selecting all of the white process. Um, the quickest one is over here you have a selection tool. Um, if you go down into this window, one of your options will be the magic wand. If you click the magic wand, it will select all of the, all of the white and it'll select colors close to white if it's not a perfect color. Like this is just a single color and it's white. It'll, it'll also select close to that color. Um, tolerance tells you how much, how much away from white it would take when it's doing that selection. Once you've selected all of that white, when you hit the little mask button, <gasps> the sheep is gone. That's the opposite of what I want, right? I want the white to go and the sheep to stay. So if I come in here 
and I and I double click on it, right? I can enter and select mask or I can view properties. I'm gonna hit view properties and then I'm gonna click this invert button and now all of the white is gone and only the sheep is left and that's what I wanted to do, okay? So that's an example of using a selection to erase a background, okay? Um, what that does is it keeps me from actually changing the original image, okay? Um, another example, right? So let's say I wanted to put this like California mountainside on the side of Kentucky, right? So I want to leave Kentucky there and I want, I want this California mountainside to kind of come down this whole side of the image, okay? So the first thing I need to do in order to make that happen, I'm gonna turn off the tiny sheep because he's not really relevant right now. And I'm gonna turn off some of this other stuff too. And using these eyeballs, right? I can just turn off stuff I don't need. Um, so now it's just the Kentucky thing and the mountain thing. Great. Um, so I'm gonna select this mountain, okay? And I'm gonna hit Control T for transform, all right? That's gonna turn on the little handles that allow you to control it, okay? That'll let you tilt it if you want to. Um, it'll let you make it bigger and smaller, right? And right now you can see it's scaling everything proportionally. If you wanted to just stretch it and not scale it proportionally, if you hold shift, it'll let you stretch it, okay? But otherwise it's gonna try and do it proportionally, um, which is fine, I'm good with that. Um, so I'm gonna just have this like, little mountain situation kind of come down and end in this, like have it cover up this like barn in Kentucky, okay? Um, and so I'm gonna start by placing it there, all right? Um, and then I'm going to come in and erase the sky section so that it just kind of falls away. And I'm also gonna erase this bottom part where it says hike speak, okay? So I'm gonna come over here and grab my erasing tool Eraser tool, that's the E is your keyboard shortcut, right? And I'm gonna make it fuzzy like that so that it looks nice. Um, and I come up here, uh, hardness. So 0% means it's 100% fuzzy and 100% means it's 0% fuzzy, right? So I'm gonna go all the way down to zero and then I'm gonna make this a little smaller. Um, and it's not gonna show me, it's gonna have the no sign until I click on it and it says you must rasterize it and I'll say, okay, all right. So now I can just like come in and take this fuzzy eraser and just kind of erase away down the side of this mountain. Okay, so now I can kind of blend it together on the bottom edge. So it's almost as if this mountain is just kind of coming up out of Kentucky. Great, and then I'll just come over here and erase all of this business and it'll be gone, okay? So we've talked a little bit about non-destructive editing, which is to create a mask, or destructive editing, which is when you rasterize it, so it's like it just takes a picture of the pixels, um, and then you can use your eraser tool to just erase things away that you don't need, okay? Um, Let's see, what other stuff is fun that I like to do? I very much like the clone stamp tool. Um, so let's look at that on this Kentucky layer. So Kentucky layer, we're gonna go ahead and rasterize it as well, just for now. We're gonna pick up our clone stamp tool and make it a little bigger using our arrows, okay? Um, is it, yeah, it's Alt on a PC, it's Option on a Mac allows you to select an area with your clone stamp tool, right? So I might select right there, and then I can color more of that stuff, okay, into the other part of the, of the scene, okay? So this is a way that I can, and I just have to kind of pick up different sections of it, make more sky that kind of matches the sky I have, and have it kind of continue up into the scene. Now I did have a little bit of a boo-boo over here, right? Because it, it picked up the wrong thing. If I come back and pick this up, I can just fill it in, okay? So the clone stamp tool is kind of fun for that sort of thing, if you're like using a texture. Um, let's see, let's play with this connectors image, okay? So I like the idea of there being some like cables and stuff. 
I'm gonna drag it up on top. Oh boy, right? Um, let's try some different blend modes, right? So like multiply and they kind of sit on top of the sky, right? Maybe darken for now. And then I would soften that bottom edge. And then I would grab my eraser tool or a mask, right? So I could just grab a mask like that and drop the mask on it and double click on my mask and feather the edge of it. Okay, so now it's kind of fading out as it hits the edge of that skyline there. How's that look? Oh yeah, okay. I'm good with that. Okay, so these are a bunch of different strategies that I would use to start collaging images together, play around with them, and um, I will see you guys with a couple of other tips on whatever the heck day, Monday, and then we'll see what you guys have come up with by Wednesday. All right, thanks friends. I will see you all later.